We are standing in the house chamber of the old state capitol. This building was actually built in 1830, it began construction in 1827, and it was used as a capitol building from 1830 to 1909. So for about 79 years, this is where all of Kentucky state government met. The reason why Frankfurt was chosen as a capital because it is one of the four smallest capital buildings in the or capitals in the United States was because the citizens of Frankfurt offered up all the materials for this building, the doors, the locks, the hinges, the lumber, and a sum of $3,000. And that's why Frankfurt was chosen as the capital because we had the most resources and the most money to start a capital here. This building was our third state capital building. The two previous capital buildings that sat on the spot burned to the ground. This building is still here even though there is a current capital building because it is a way to kind of commemorate what went on in this building. When they were thinking about building a current, the current Capitol building, they really thought long and hard about whether they wanted to keep it here in Frankfurt. Eventually they did. And they thought about whether or not they wanted to put the new Capitol on this property. The property was not large enough for the Capitol building, so it spared this building from being torn down. The architecture of this building is very, very unique. It is built in the Greek Revival style of architecture. The architect him, was a man by the name of Gideon Schrock, 25 years old, and this was his very first job. And the two previous Capitol buildings that had sat on the site had burned to the ground. And you know, you would think after two previous buildings burning to the ground, they'd find a different location, but the apparently third time was charm because this one's been here 181 years. But our architect, Mr. Schrock, entered a contest, a design contest, that the legislature put together to find a local architect for the third capital. They paid a $150 premium. He submitted his designs, he won, and in 1827 they began construction on this building, and three years after that, in 1830, it was complete. And this particular building was the first public building in Greek Revival style west of the Allegheny Mountains, which was very unusual for the time. Lots of Greek elements throughout the building. Um, lots, of, uh, lots of columns, ionic columns, lots of things to make you think of ancient Greece. The building itself from the very front is meant to look like an ancient Greek temple. That's why there are no windows on the front of the building. But a lot of elements in here right down to the designs and the plaster work are meant to make you think of the Greek style of architecture. This staircase is one of the most significant pieces in the building. When people visit the Old State Capitol, this is one of the most important things they come to see. It is a freestanding or floating stone staircase. The only thing that actually supports the staircase and keeps it in place is a large trapezoid shaped stone in the center of the staircase. That is the keystone. The staircase is meant to look like a reclining arch or an arch turned on its side. And all arches have to have a keystone in order to keep them in place. If you look beyond that wonderful modern convenience of a projector, you will see that large trapezoid shaped stone or keystone. What also makes the staircase significant is how they went about building the staircase, or our 25-year-old architect, Gideon Schrock, went about building the staircase. He had a lot of help. He did not do it on his own. The staircase was built using slave labor because it was the time of slavery, skilled craftspeople, and also prison labor. If you are going to have prisoners in the building, you obviously have to have somebody here who's going to make sure that they take care of the job. The warden of the state penitentiary, a man by the name of Joel Scott, was always on site during that time. But one thing that makes him very interesting is that he invented a steam-powered saw that enabled them to carve each one of these steps to fit exactly into the next one. They fit very much like puzzle pieces, one right into the other. Each stair is placed flush against the wall and wooden supports were placed underneath them on either side. Once the staircase or once the stairs got to the top and they were ready for the keystone, through a pulley system of several men on either side of that stone, they raised it up, they shoved that stone in. It is about eight inches into the wall. And because the space that they shoved it in and the pressure of that stone, it forced all the other stairs downward to the base. And that's what's held it here for 181 years. There are no iron bars in the wall. There is no cement. And the staircase is what those legislators saw 181 years ago. Nothing has changed. 
Um, around 1890, they really started to look at this building and think that it was in disrepair. It needed a lot of work and it was going to be very expensive to do so. And that's when they began thinking about building a new Capitol building. And also, they had received war reparations once the Civil War was over, so they had the money. They had a little over a million dollars to build a new building. And they just started to think that maybe Frankfurt wasn't the right place for the capital anymore. They thought about maybe a larger city like Lexington or Louisville, cities that had uh, more opportunities for the citizens, and they wanted to do what was best for the Commonwealth. And they went back and forth between Lexington and Louisville, and eventually two gentlemen who were local judges in the town, or in Frankfurt, uh, thought, you know, if we if we choose Lexington or Louisville, we're gonna be going against all those gentlemen who chose Frankfurt in the very beginning. All the citizens who offered up all those, all those uh, resources and all that money to keep the capital here time and time again. And in the end, they chose to keep Frankfurt as the state capital. This building was the only pro-union capital occupied by the Confederate Army during the Civil War. The Confederates were actually inaugurating their governor in this building when they heard distant shelling and they knew that the Union Army was coming. The Confederates inaugurated their provisional governor, a man by the name of Richard Hawes, who was actually the second Confederate governor in Kentucky. And as soon as that inauguration was complete, they heard the shelling and they went, they got out of town. They burned bridges as they were leaving town in order to keep those troops at bay. Um, the Union soldiers came in and the Union actually used this building as a barracks during the Civil War. Right in this doorway is where they were inaugurating Mr. Hawes, right before shelling started, and they retreated out of the building before the Union Army took it over. And as we move around the room here, the, another reason this room is significant is there are some original pieces that were in the room during the time that they used the building. Now, the individual representative's desk that you see here are reproduction. The pieces that are original to the building are the pieces towards the front of the room. On this side, we have the clerk's desk or the scribe. That is the person who would be responsible for taking care of the vote in the House chamber of any piece of legislation that was voted on. In my opinion, he would have been the Speaker of the House right hand man in here. Also, we have the Speaker of the House desk and chair. Again, another original piece to the building. A lot of great detail work on that chair and on the desk. And then the other pieces that are original to the room, we have two desks in the very far corner over here that are original to this building. All these desks are representatives' desks, so they're individual representatives in the room. We are in the Senate chamber of the Old State Capitol. A little bit on the layout of the room and where people were positioned in this room. The desks that are in the center of the room were, of course, the senator's desk. And when they used this building, we had 38 senators. So you will see all 38 desks here in the middle of the room. To the side of the desk, you will see the visitor's gallery. If you happen to be in Frankfurt and the legislature was in session, anyone was welcome to come in and have a seat. Towards the center of the room, you would have had the President of the Senate. Again, much like the House Chamber, he would have been, um, he would have had the lead role in this building or in this room. To the left of the President of the Senate, you would have had a tiny little desk up front. That is the clerk's desk. That gentleman was responsible for keeping all the records of the Senate as well as administering the vote when they voted on any piece of legislation in the room. And towards the right of the president of the Senate's podium, you have a table with several chairs. That was for the Frankfurt Press or the local newspaper. If you could not be in Frankfurt for the legislative proceedings, you could have read about it in any of the local papers because they were represented in this room. Just a couple of other things to note about this particular room. When Kentucky was deciding whether or not it was going to enter the Civil War, whether or not it would enter in on the Union or the Confederate side, or just not enter it at all and remain neutral, every piece of legislation, including those neutrality debates, happened in this chamber in the Senate, 
and also in the House of Representatives. Ultimately, Kentucky decided to remain neutral for a period of time, and then they came back to the drawing board and entered in on the side of the Union. At one point in time, this building, like we spoke about earlier, was taken over by the Confederate Army. Once the Confederates retreated from the building, the Union took it over, and this room was actually used as a barracks for the Union Army. All the desks that you see in here, or the desks that would have been in here at the time, were pushed over in the corner of the room, and a camp was set up in this room for a period of time in order to restore order in Frankfurt, and to make sure that the Confederate Army would not return to Frankfurt. So you can imagine what it would have been like here. All these desks in disarray shoved over in one corner. At that point in time, the legislature was no longer in the building. They had actually left town days before the Confederate Army took over the building. But this particular room was used as a barrack. So those Union soldiers actually slept in this room. This building is significant not only to the Commonwealth but to Frankfurt because the architectural features in it, the fact that it was one of the first public buildings that uh, had the Greek style of architecture or Greek revival, the fact that during the Civil War nothing happened to this building. Yes, it was taken over by the Confederate Army and the Union Army, but it still stands today. There absolutely nothing happened to this building other than them taking it over. Every piece of Civil War legislation that was decided on during that period of time was decided on in these two chambers. Whether Kentucky would remain neutral and even enter the war happened in these two chambers. So all those things are very significant and not many places can say that they have both an old and a new capital.